in 1948, Burma gained its independence from Britain and for a short time practiced the democratic form of government they had learned from the British. However, in 1962, the government was taken over by the military and the country has virtually been under military rule since that time. While the people of Burma have been free to practice their Christianity and even evangelize in some regions with local government approval, some of the ethnic groups have had ongoing clashes with the Burmese military. One of the groups that have been brutally oppressed is the Karen, the same ethnic group that Eric B. Hare worked with for so many years. As a result, many Karen have fled across the border into Thailand, where they take refuge in camps set up by the Thai government. Some have lived in these camps for decades. In 1966, a young man who had recently graduated from the Adventist Seminary in Burma heard about the refugees along the Thai border and felt impressed to go and work for them. At first, it was very difficult. It is not easy to work in a place where there are no Christians. It was only after two or three years of visiting the people in their homes that Pastor Palmore was able to get some of the people to become interested in Christianity. Once again, like Elder Hare, Pastor Palmore discovered that it was only after he became friends with the people and began to meet their needs that their hearts would respond to the gospel message. The method he found worked best was to open schools. In those days, there were no schools. I felt impressed that if we could start schools, we would not only meet a real need for the people, we could also have the opportunity to share the gospel with the children that came. With God's help, we started two schools, one in Thailand and one across the border in No Man's Land. I call it No Man's Land because the land is under martial law. If the Burmese government soldiers find you in this area, they shoot first and ask questions later. It doesn't matter who you are, they will kill you. Another reason why I call it no man's land is because no one seems to care what happens to the people who are living here. As Pastor Palmore stepped out in faith and built the bamboo schools in the jungles of no man's land, God began to provide funds to help pay the teachers and Bible workers a small stipend for their work. As they prayed and trusted God for help, People heard about the work that they were doing and started sending in small donations each month to help. Over the years, the work has grown as God has blessed. The schools were a big success. From those first two schools that we started, we now have 38 schools. Some are in the refugee camps, but many more are located in no man's land. The soldiers come, scatter the people, and burn down the schools, but we just build again in another location. Our enrollment has grown from 25 to about 5,000 students. Because of these schools, God's work has really grown. Many of the students have become dedicated teachers and lay pastors. It was when I was a student at this school that I became a Christian and accepted Jesus as my Savior. Because my heart was so full, I wanted to share that joy with others. So I decided to become a teacher myself. And now I am the one teaching the children about God's love. The subjects that I enjoy teaching the most are health and Bible. To me, there is no greater joy that a teacher can have than when she sees one of her students accept Christ as their personal savior. This is what makes it all worthwhile. Even though I teach commerce and English, I still have many opportunities to talk to my students about God. When I see these young people accepting Jesus and making decisions to follow Him, it brings me the greatest satisfaction. 
that I am able to do this kind of work. I am the only Adventist in my family. After graduating from college, I took a job as a teacher in a small village in the eastern part of the country. But after only two months of teaching there, the Burmese soldiers came and we had to flee. They burned our school and the village. Some very kind people guided me to the border of Thailand and brought me across to the refugee camps. When the officers found out that I was a teacher, they directed me to this school. I cannot tell you how delighted I was to discover that it was an Adventist school. I praise God that he has led me here to work for him. This is an amazing school. It is training young people to walk in the right way. I love to share my faith with my students and teach them about the great love that he has for them. The thing that I like the most about this school is that they teach the Bible here. No other school in the camps do that. I was born into a Buddhist family, and when I first came to the school, I did not know much about the Bible or God. But every day, our teachers have taught us about the love of God and how Jesus came to this earth to save us and help us live better lives. I decided that this is what I wanted for my life. I have accepted Christ and have been baptized here at this school. Only about 25% of the students that attend our school come from Adventist homes. The rest come from other religions or faiths. This gives us a wonderful opportunity to share Christ with the young people who come through our school. I believe that Christian education is one of the best ways to evangelize. It brings me the greatest joy when I see these young people accepting Jesus and becoming baptized. And then, as they finish and graduate from our school, some of them want to go on and become nurses, doctors, teachers, and pastors. It is wonderful to think about how God's work will grow as these young people go out and work for Him in the future. Now, we have about 174 teachers and about 25 lay pastors. Even though we do not pay them a lot, the salaries of that many workers adds up to a lot each month. The reason that we need help from our friends from abroad is because the villages are very poor. In the refugee camps, it is very difficult to make any income. And in no man's land, the crops are destroyed by the enemy soldiers every year. They burn down the homes, their barns, and destroy their food. The people are very poor. They don't really even have enough clothing or food each year. As a result, it is very difficult to collect any school fees at all. And yet, we believe that this work is so important that we must keep running the schools and trust in God for the funds to come. Every month we have challenges and yet witness great miracles. God is faithful, and we are putting our trust in Him. The Meramu refugee camp houses more than 9,000 people who live in simple huts made from thatch and bamboo. For security reasons, the camps are guarded by soldiers and protected by barbed wire, and the refugees are not allowed to leave the camp to find work in Thailand. Living in a refugee camp can feel like a prison. The Meila refugee camp was established in 1984, and there are many young people who have spent their entire lives in the refugee camp and know very little about the outside world. We believe that we can change the world they live in by providing them with Christian education. True freedom comes through Jesus Christ. The Bible says, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Did you know it only costs $70 a month to sponsor a teacher? ASAP is stepping out in faith this year and committing to give $15,000 to help support the Karen Adventist 
Academy. Would you like to join us in this faith endeavor? What a blessing it is to be involved in giving young people a knowledge of Jesus Christ.